Hey there, in this video we are going to go into more depth on evaluating algebraic expressions, specifically some more complex ones. So before we do that, I want to remind you of a couple um, pieces of expressions or parts of an expression that might come in handy in this lesson. So as a quick reminder, if we see this symbol right here, that is a square root. If we have, for example, the square root of 64, remember that that's really asking you what times itself gives you the number underneath. In other words, what times itself gives you 64, and that would be 8 times 8 that gives you 64. So the square root of 64 is equal to the number 8. Another example real quick, the square root of 100 would be what number times itself gives you 100, and that would be the number 10. 10 times 10 is 100. So those are just some um, quick reviews of uh, roots. And then also one other piece of review that might come in handy is anytime you have something divided by something else, we can write that as a fraction, or we can write that as division from left to right like this. Um, I want to remind you that when you see a fraction, that fraction bar is really division. So that will come in handy in what we're going to look at too. So let's go ahead and take a look at example one. It says evaluate the following expression given the variable values. So we are given an expression, the square root of d plus four times the square root of d minus nine. And they tell us that d has a value of 45. So anywhere there's a d in this expression, we are going to plug in 45 in that spot. So in that first root, we have the square root of 45 plus four times the square root of 45 minus 9. Now using our order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or however you remember um, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we are going to start with the root. So the roots are going to actually fit in the parentheses category of order of operations. So typically when we think of parentheses, we think of parentheses, brackets, the curly brackets, anything like that, those grouping symbols, roots are actually going to work the same way. So we are going to use those roots as essentially a grouping symbol. So anything underneath is really in parentheses and you would wanna evaluate that first. So 45 plus four, we can go ahead and evaluate that, add those together and you get 49. So we have the square root of 49 times the square root of 45 minus 9. Remember, as a quick mental math reminder, 45 minus 10 is an easy one to do in your head. 45 minus 10 is 35. But if we're only subtracting 9, not a full 10, then we only drop down to 36, not all the way to 35. So if that helps you to kind of do that mental math in your head, I know sometimes people get tripped up on the 9, subtracting 9. So that can be a helpful tool as well. So now to go one step further with roots, not only are we going to evaluate what's underneath, but if we can, if we get a whole number when we root the number underneath or square root the number underneath, then we would want to go ahead and evaluate that further. So the square root of 49, just like we talked about at the beginning of this video lesson, um, the square root of 49 is going to be what number times itself gives us 49, and that would be the number seven times the square root of 36. Again, what number times itself gives you 36? And that would be six. So seven times six is going to give us 42. So our answer here is 42. And again, most of this fit under that parentheses category. Once we got rid of the roots, which was all technically part of the parentheses part of order of operations, we had no exponents. And then we got to multiplication and division, and that's all we had left, 7 times 6, and that gave us that 42. So now let's take a look at number 2. On number 2, we see a fraction plus another fraction. So we see, again, 5x minus 2 divided by 4x minus 3, and then 4x minus 3 divided by 5x minus 2, and we're adding those fractions together. And they tell us that x is equal to 6. So anywhere there's an x in this problem, 
we are going to put a six in that spot. So remember, five X really means five times X. So five times six minus two over four X minus three. So four times six minus three. That's the first fraction. Plus, then we have the second fraction, four X. So four times six minus three and five times six minus two. So what we want to do is we want to follow our order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, while we don't see anything within the parentheses that we can actually simplify, like we just see a six inside each of these, we do have some simplifying that we can do in this parenthesis category. So with fractions, we actually are considering the top of each fraction and the bottom of each fraction really to be in its own set of parentheses essentially. While we don't have to write them there, that's essentially what can be assumed from having a fraction written with a numerator and a denominator. Um, so parentheses, while they're not explicitly there, can be assumed and we can go ahead and simplify what's on top and what's on bottom of those fractions separately and then worry about how they work together top to bottom or adding the fractions together and we can worry about all that. So we're going to start with what I have in these orange brackets first. So we're going to evaluate each part separately and then again we'll worry about meshing it all together. So let's start with 5 times 6 minus 2. 5 times 6 minus 2, 5 times 6 is going to be done first, that's 30 minus 2. 30 minus 2 gives us 28. So we have 28 on top of the fraction. Then we do 4 times 6 minus 3. 4 times 6 is 24 minus 3 gives us 21. So this fraction, when we evaluate the top and the bottom, we get 28 over 21. Then we have the plus sign, and then we have our second fraction. So again, we see four times six minus three again. We just did that down here. So when we did that, we ended up with 21. And then five times six minus two, that we just saw at the top on the first fraction. So that we already evaluated and we got that to be 28. So now that we have our fractions simplified in the sense that the top and the bottom expressions are now just single numbers. So 28, 21, 21, and 28. We can go ahead and add these fractions together, but to add the fractions together, we need common denominators. So 21 and 28, those are a little bit bigger than what we're probably used to doing in mental math. So my suggestion to you is because these are both 28 and 21 are both divisible by seven, I would actually go ahead and simplify each of these fractions by dividing the top and the bottom by seven. And if you do that, 28 divided by seven is going to give us four on top. And 21 divided by seven is going to give us three on bottom. So the first fraction will be four thirds or four over three. The second fraction, 21 divided by seven is three. 28 divided by seven is four. So we have four thirds plus three fourths. And if we have four thirds plus three fourths, then we want to go ahead and um, we wanna look at those denominators and we want to get those to be common denominators like we said a second ago. But now we have smaller numbers to work with so it'll be a little easier to get those common denominators. So if we wanna turn these into the same denominator, three and four can both be multiplied by a number to turn into 12. If you aren't comfortable doing that in your head, you could list out the multiples, for example, of three and four. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, so on and so on. And then four, eight, 12. And you'll notice that the first number that is on both lists is the number 12, which means that is your least common denominator. So you don't need to write all those out, but that is an option if you are somebody that, that helps to see that list visually and find that first number that is shared between the lists. You absolutely can do it that way. So 12 is our common denominator. So now we need to figure out what did we do? What did we multiply each denominator by to turn it into 12? So for three, we multiplied by four, which means we need to multiply the numerator by four to get that new numerator, which is going to be 16. 
and then four times three it was what gave us 12 over here so we need to multiply the numerator by three as well to get that new second numerator so that would be nine so now we have 16 over 12 plus 9 over 12 and we have common denominators so that means we can go ahead and just add across the top of the fraction so 16 plus 9 and when we do that we end up with 25 on top over the common denominator 12 and we can just leave that as our answer because that is simplified all the way 25 and 12 can't be divided by the same number other than the number one all right let's take a look at example three so in example three we have a fraction i squared minus nine over i minus 11 and then after the fraction we have minus six and we are told that i is equal to seven so anywhere there's an i we are going to go ahead and plug in seven so let's set that up notice we do have parentheses here around the top and the bottom while they're not technically needed seven there while they're not technically needed around the seven squared minus nine it is already there kind of like we talked about in the last problem if they weren't there we could assume that they're there and that indicates to us that we're going to simplify the top and the bottom of the fraction separately and then worry about putting them together once we get each part evaluated so plug in seven for i so seven squared minus nine on top and then on bottom, we have 7 minus 11. And then we have minus 6 after the fraction. So if we think back to our order of operations, parentheses, we want to go ahead and evaluate first. So we're going to do 7 squared minus 9 and 7 minus 11 first. So when we do that, we get 7 squared, which is 49 minus 9. 49 minus 9 is just 40. So on top of that fraction, we will have 40. On bottom, we have 7 minus 11, which is negative 4. So 40 divided by negative 4, and then we still have minus 6 after that. So parentheses are done and gone. There are no exponents left. We did that back in the beginning with the parentheses. That was within the parentheses. And then we have multiplication and division from left to right. There is no multiplication, but there is division right here with this 40 divided by negative 4. 40 divided by negative 4 will be negative 10. So we have negative 10 minus 6. And that covers our multiplication and division. And then we just go ahead and put negative 10 minus 6 together, and that gives us negative 16, which will be our final answer on this one. So for a quick summary, we have... Um, We've talked about order of operations, and specifically we talked a lot about the parentheses and what that could actually look like beyond just parentheses. So while it could be parentheses, it could also be brackets, it could be the curly brackets, it also could be square roots, it could be um, fractions, and specifically within the top and the bottom of the fraction, remember that each part is essentially in its own set of parentheses, even if it's not written that way, we can assume that with parentheses um, within fractions. And then we just, once we get those parentheses simplified, whether it's actual parentheses or brackets, or if it's the roots or the fractions, whichever, um, version it looks like. Once we get those simplified, then remember we do still go on to do our exponents that are left, any multiplication and division from left to right, and then any addition and subtraction from left to right as well. And then we get our answer once we've gone through all of those order of operations. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day.